Granada, tierra soñada por mí. Mi canto se vuelve gitano cuando es para ti. Yes, we are in Granada, the land of pomegranates. And we're going to tell you a little bit about the history and share some wonderful books. But first, this is Latina Literati. beautiful song Granada was of course written by the fabulous Mexican composer Agustin Lara in 1932 and in 1974 it became the official anthem of this beautiful city, this very ancient city. And again, as is so much a part of the Mediterranean, there have been human inhabitants and towns and tribes and small encampments for thousands of years. But let's start at the very beginning. The legendary city of Granada was settled, of course, thousands of years ago. It's at the foot of the Sierra Nevada hills, and so you can be skiing in the morning and then you can have lunch on the Mediterranean. Very few places that this can happen in the Mediterranean, but this is one of them. And so, of course, tribes settled here thousands of years ago, and of course then came the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, everyone's trading, everyone is, you know, intermingling, and eventually the Visigoths and the Romans uh, and the Greeks all came. And it's interesting that in this area you have some of the first Romans that are granted uh, the right of settlement and of course that means that then everyone has Roman citizenship. And in 700, 700 and a little bit more, you have the Amazigh, which in their language means free people, but the Romans called them Berbers for barbarians and they are newly converted to this religion that has come out of the Arabian desert and they cross over from North Africa led by their general Tariq, for which Gibraltar is named, and they take over almost all of this peninsula, including of course this area, and establish a fortress, an area from which to govern that they call Granada. For the next almost 800 years, Granada will be a center of learning, a center of culture, a center of translation. There will be so many texts that arrive from Baghdad, from Damascus. Truly what we consider the Renaissance is only made possible by the exchange of ideas that occurs in this amazing place called, of course, the Pearl of the world. We won't go into all of the politics back and forth of the Reconquista and all of that, but safe to say that it is during the Nazri uh, rule that the Alhambra or Alhambra in Spanish comes to be. And it's just an intricately decorated palace. It's actually several palaces and one is more beautiful than the next. It is absolutely astonishing the amount of beauty that goes into every aspect of every detail. Unfortunately, not all of the details have come down to us. So it is from stories that we know that all of the windows were covered in stained glass that would affect the lights and would make each room almost seem like a dream. So really amazing, the architecture, it is considered a prime example of Islamic architecture in the world. And it is the second most visited site in Spain after Sagrada Familia. The jewel of Granada, Alhambra, is of course made up of gardens and of courtyards and of beautiful palaces. And all of this comes crashing down in 1492 when Isabel and Ferdinand take the city after a long, long campaign. They are finally able to take the city and the keys are handed over by the last Khalif, Boabdil. Of course, after that, their son, uh, Carlos V, will actually demolish part of it and build his own castle, his own area to rule, until he decides to move the capital to Madrid. Uh, and of course, Napoleon's troops will bombard part of it insanity before they are kicked out. So you have some of the area that has been destroyed, but a lot of it is still here for us to appreciate and really see the magnificence that was the just the epitome of uh, Islamic architecture at its peak. Today, Granada is a relatively small city with about 300,000 uh, inhabitants and about 10% uh, of those attend a university. So without the university, it would be even less. So it's really walkable. It's very safe, very clean, thoroughly enjoyed it. And there's a whole area called Albacin that you should 
make a point to enjoy as well as all of the historic areas within the city. Beautiful statues. There's one of a um, the patriarch of the Jewish translators of the books, which I think is just fabulous because it shows that for so many years, the three Abrahamic religions lived in relative peace in this area. So it is possible. And that's what we need to work towards uh, for today and for tomorrow. Everywhere you look in Granada is really an artwork, just beautiful paintings and sculpture and walkways, the streets, you know, along the small uh, river. Just beautiful, beautiful areas to walk. It's a very walkable city, so thoroughly recommend it. The famous uh, virgin of La Macarena is uh, in Granada, also worth a visit. There are several uh, churches that are really artwork um, to be visited. And of course, I'm going to tell you even more during my favorite part of the video, the book recommendations. If you like chisme, then this first book is for you. Imagine you could rent a room in the Alhambra, and that's exactly what Washington Irving did some time ago. He just rented a room there and started speaking to everyone, gathering all of the stories and the tales that everyone remembered, and he put them in a book called Tales of the Alhambra. And so just it's just full of scintillating stories and details that will amuse you and entertain you if you really want to get an insider's view some time ago. The second book is called El Manuscrito Carmesí, which is a fabulous book, and it is about the stories of court life during the height of Granada. Beautiful book, highly recommended. Um, and as always, check your local library, check your local bookseller, because I'm sure that they will have access to these books. And we leave links to independent booksellers in the description box, should you choose to acquire them new or used. Third book is called The Ornament of the World, and I have recommended it before, and I continue to recommend it because it is so beautiful. It discusses how um, Jews, Christians, and Muslims live together in peace in Granada, and how that was possible. It wasn't perfect, but you had all three of the groups participating in government, participating in civic affairs, participating in economic affairs, and that's what made it possible, that everybody had a stake in the economy, in society. And you had a very high level of tolerance. So again, wonderful book, The Ornament of the World, highly recommend it. As always, thank you so much for joining me on this joint journey. Thank you so much for watching these videos. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love you to subscribe to Latina Literati. Let us know what you're reading. Let us know if you've been to Granada and what you enjoyed. Thank you so much. And as always, con mucho cariño, mucho salud, mucho amor. Gracias.